All right. So, what do we leave off on? Uh, who was fifty one? Oh, right, Wonderwall. Right, right, right. Okay. So, <clears throat> we left off on good old Wonderwall number 51. Moving to the top 50, I didn't really expect Destro to be here. I feel like Destro is a weird pick. I'm always just super biased against the boomers. Um, but I'm surprised to see him at number 50 because I thought it would just be higher with the way that the list was shaping up to be before because he's just sort of like a superior boomer to a lot of the boomers. I'm not. See, that's the thing. I'm not a boomer. That's the craziest thing is if you guys think of my RSTF2 as boomer, then you literally don't even know who these players are. Um, but Destro was like an early, yeah, like he only played for two years, but he was a really good demo man early on where like, it's hard to come into a game and be really good, like off, off the bat and kind of lead other players like down, down the right path in terms of your gameplay. So like you have to give people like Destro props for sure, because he was the best demo man like before. You know, like the the Bannies and the Platts and the, I don't know, who, whoever else played like demo in the small interim before uh, before Banny came out onto the scene. But you have to give like Destro some props for that. Uh, but at the same time, 50 definitely seems pretty high in my opinion, but also kind of low for what the rest of the list was was uh, looking at because there are definitely some boomers in like the 60s and the 70s or something like that that are way worse than Destro. So, I mean, I think it's a little bit much to be top 50 all time, but whatever. Showstopper number 49. See, like Show played forever too. Show, Show played from 2014 to 2018 and 2020, and that's all an invite. Showstopper as like an actual player who played the game, played the game before I played the game. He was on, like, the Knights of Bax. Thanks for this Trish Prime stuff, by the way. Showstopper was on, like, the Knights of Goku before I even played, like, competitive TF2. So he's been around for literally forever. Um, this is just, like, his invite years, which is a small sample size of, like, how long he's been in the community um, altogether. So Showstopper, number 49. I think he deserves a little bit higher of a placement than 49 if Destro's going to be 50. Um, but this is all kind of hazy anyway, because, you know, to to measure, like, the 49th player against the 50th, 50th player is, like, pretty hard. So, I mean, Showstopper, pretty solid player. Uh, 49 is, is, I guess, I guess. Kozen, 48. Uh, I, I find it really weird on this list where, like, every medic has to fulfill, like, a certain, like spot on the list like every single time you go to like one installment of 10 there like has to be like one medic on it like as if playing medic like gives you like it's obviously hard to measure medics because they don't frag and they don't have like outstanding individual plays and stuff for the most part at least back then but it's just like weird how every single installment has to have like a certain medic in it um but, like, as far as, like, ranking goes, like, Kozen48, like, Kozen seems to be maybe a little bit too high based on, like, what he actually accomplished in the game. Like, four seasons played. He had, like, a perfect season or whatever. Um, but he played, like, four seasons. Um, and he was definitely, like, probably the, the best overall medic or, like, in contention for the best overall medic, like, when he played. Um... But, like, in terms of, like, a career, I think, like, 404 accomplished more. Yo, what's up, number five? I think, uh, like, yeah, like, 404 accomplished more than Kozen. So it's just, like, kind of kind of weird. It, I feel like the medics in, in this list are just sort of, like, evenly spaced out. And uh, they just took, like, whoever 
was like their favorite medic and put them in front of other medics or something like that. <clears throat> um, 47 try. See, like try is one of those players where I like agree with this placement from like a skill perspective, but try also didn't really play for that long. Like he has two years active played five seasons playoffs four times. I was on his team. Uh, one of the times we went to land um, and we were actually pretty good that year. Uh, that year is actually really stupid because that's the year that the quick fix came out. And when we were playing as like the tryhards in the regular season, when the quick fix wasn't allowed, we were like the second seed. So we were like losing to Banny's team, but we were beating mix up. Um, and then for whatever reason, they decided to allow the quick fix, which came out in the middle, like, or toward the end of the season. They just like allowed it in, in the season. So like we went in for most of the season, having played with the, just like Uber and crits. And then for LAN and like the end of the season, they were just using the quick fix, which gave like people like mix up who caught onto it really quickly, like a more favorable finish than they might've gotten otherwise. Cause I think we actually could have beaten mix up with just Uber and crits, but we were too small brain to, <laughs> to, to win the, the quick fix menace. That was just like really stupid. So maybe he like deserved <laughs> at least second that year. Uh, but all things considered, like he didn't really play for that long. From a, a skill perspective, I definitely agree that he should be highly ranked, but uh, a little bit weird just based on how long he played. Try has some of the best rockets. Yeah, I mean, Try has really good like DM in general. Um, Oplad number 46. I expected a higher ranking. I expected like 40th for Oplad or something because Oplad played a, a really fucking... He played like... For a decent amount of time, like four years is a pretty decent amount of time. Nine seasons played, eight playoff appearances, one championship. And he was like around from like the very beginning. Um, so he like was one of, you know, the top scouts in the game from literally like the get-go. Like he was, you know, competing with like Reptile and shit, you know. So it's kind of like almost like a little bit. Like he's one of the only boomers that I'm like surprised is lower because I expect him to be much higher. I, like, I don't... <clears throat> in the grand scheme of things, like, a player like Carnage is, is more... Uh, he's, like, more influential, I guess, than Oplad, but really not that much more decorated and also played for the exact same amount of time. But, like, the differential in ranking is, like, enormous. <clears throat> Marmalou is definitely another one of those players that, like deserves to be ranked really highly but it's like sort of like a skill versus like accomplishments discussion because like marmalou is definitely like probably one of if not the most like skilled soldier players in terms of like dm that i've that i've ever seen like even like people like mike included um but like he you know he just a lot of these players like just haven't like really won at all but they've like made their way into like a pretty into a pretty favorable ranking especially like Kozen who didn't even like play that long um and try so like it's I don't know he played yeah Marble at least played like longer and he's from like a more recent era where like the I don't think Terry like Terry very clearly has like a bias toward like what he considers to be the golden age um but yeah Marmalou definitely incredible player I think in terms of, like, if I made a list of myself in terms of skill, um, he'd be even higher than this. So, Solid Snake, 44. Um, Solid Snake is, like, I almost, like, forgot Solid Snake existed, to be honest. <laughs> because he was, like, such a weird demo. And, like, just just to, like give you like a litmus test or like not that's like the wrong word but like give you an idea of what the game is like the game was like when solid snake was like really good is like toward the end of when solid snake was playing he was running like the charge and targe and they were like still like winning slash like doing very well and he literally didn't have stickies so another one of those players where like when you look at it <laughs> From like a with a more modern scope, 
and you look at the players who played and uh <laughs> and like the the style of of play and how how good the teams were it looks like he's rated way too highly um which i like kind of agree with like solid snake was never really like an unbelievable insane demo like he was just he like his thing was like he could hit pipes really well but like he used the fucking charge and charge like half the time so um I don't know. Like, he's won, like, three championships. A lot of these championships, though, like, aren't even LAN. Like, LAN didn't even start in TF2 until a certain season. Like, a lot of the early wins that you see from people, like, the championships aren't even LAN championships. Which is, like, maybe not the biggest deal to some people, but in this list, especially, he talks about how important LAN is compared to, like, not LAN. Um, but Solid Snake was good. 44, maybe a little bit too high. I don't, I don't know. His, it looks like he's a very decorated player, but I think that is, that's just like looking at stats without any context. Uh, Justin, Justin is like, I was talking like last time I did this list and I was like, there's fucking no way that they snub Justin. But at the same time, 43 is like pretty high. <clears throat> I don't know. Justin was a really good player. So again, like from like a skill perspective, I would put him at least here. But from a perspective of like, did he like win <laughs> and shit? Like it's hard to justify because Justin was always just a really, really good sniper. A better scout than he got credit for, for sure. He was like just, he was a, a good scout player. Like he made good decisions, had good DM. Um, but he was just like so good at sniper that people saw him like, as a sniper player, mainly. Um, so, yeah. I mean, Justin is is really good. It's hard for me to give, like, a, whether or not the ranking is, like, good enough or not. Um, but, sure. Like, when, when I contrast Justin to somebody like Oplad, like, I'm surprised Justin is ahead of Oplad, I guess, is is the best way to think about it. <clears throat> oh, I'm number 42. Yeah, good joke. Boomer was a really good player, but I'm so surprised that he's number 42. Um, Because that, that's like the thing. Like when I first looked at this list and I was like looking at like the 90s and the 80s and the 70s and all this shit, there were like so many random people I felt like that were there that like just didn't have to be there. And that's where like a lot of players like Boomer could have just been, and it would have made sense if you, like, stacked the rest of the list just with, like, people who won and who are, like, really fucking good. Even from this era, like, I don't even, like, I'm not, like, an era snob. Like, I think that, like, a lot of people who played now are, like, really fucking good. Like, Lol Guy deserves a much better ranking than what he got just from, like, that one win alone. And, like, Boomer is, is like, only number 42 because, like, he played for, like, a decent amount of time. And, like, Boomer's, like, a skilled player. Like, he could, like, come back and, like, not be much worse than he was before if he just, like, practiced and stuff. But, like, he didn't. Like, half of his seasons, only half of them are playoff appearances. He was, like, a good player when he went to playoffs and he was, like, very, um, like versatile like he, he had played soldier demo scout he was like my scout partner when i played and then he switched to demo for land it's just like a really big like he's definitely like a versatile player but just like this is more of like a you hear the name boomer and you're like oh he played like back in like 2011 and like 2013 and shit and like that's when everybody was really good and like he was a good player so like he has to be 42 but i, I don't know like i feel like that's like a really high ranking um and the only reason it makes sense in the context of this list is because, you know, in, in the fucking like eighties and nineties, they have like a Highlander player <laughs> or whatever, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> oh yeah, I did. Uh, there I am. Corsa. In the community, it's very memed on that course is number 41. A bunch of hashtags, uh, justice for Nick going on. 
on my Steam friends list. Definitely seems um, a little bit too low, but but again, of course, there's like another one of those players that like you look at them and like you know they're really good mechanically, but like <laughs> he doesn't have like he's never won half of his seasons or playoff appearances or slightly more than half. Um, so like if you just look at his stats, you would be like, oh, maybe that does make sense. The thing that's different from Boomer and Corsa though is that Corsa was like a really, really talented individual player. Whereas like Boomer was good individually, but like he wasn't Corsa um, on like any of the classes he played really. So like Corsa's like ability to impact the game on scout makes this ranking seem a little bit um, too low. Because the only time, the only time I'd agree with like looking at stats like this or like achievements like this or whatever and being like, yeah, this is too low, is if the player themselves were sort of just like reflective of those stats, but that's like not really the case with Corsa. He's like way too good to have like stats like this and look at them just without any context. So Corsa probably a little bit too low on this list should be like at least in the 30s. Um, at least, probably more in like the 20s. Um, but like, <laughs> like they give you like this graphic at the end of every single one of them and like look at all these like random people that are on this list that like like, like Mason Bohr like Hubris Paladin like pa literally nobody would know who Paladin was if he didn't ring for Sickness when Sickness's power went out in like the the EG finals or whatever like they were like playing complexity in the finals and like sickness is like computer bricked or something and paladin like rang for him and no one would even know who the fuck paladin was if it wasn't for that so it's like it just seems like really it seems like they're trying to give like everyone from every era like they picked out some like names that like they can like from the back of their their head and they pulled it out and they were like oh paladin but like so the, Sometimes if you played from like 2008 to 2010 and you really didn't do anything spectacular, like it's okay if you're not on the list. You know what I mean? Who has Mumasilla? Because he's absolutely dog shit. Um, but yeah. You would think with like, if it was like well, it more well put together that you would see like people like boomer like around this area and it would make sense because they wouldn't be surrounded by like hubris um let's move on number 40 we got steve we got steve we got dewatna legendary legendary froyo tech demo man Um, I said this on the thread, but it's hard for me to imagine 39 players with better careers than Dewatna. Like, he went from being, like, a really unbelievably good demo man carry on, like, R5 and 20B to joining us on Froyo Tech. And then just nonstop winning. Um, and those wins were like not the easiest wins. We even won. We won I fifty two. We won I fifty five. So like that's not only three ECA championships that he has, um, but also a Sevo championship I think, unless he skipped out on the tournament, and then two insomnia wins yeah i don't does it not say anything about uh yeah, it doesn't say anything about ifc5 so like he won two internationals three ESCA championships and like a sevo championship and then jaeger's number 39 so let's Let's concentrate on how fucking crazy this ranking is. 
like Steve Dwana definitely deserves at, at least like number 29 like at least like from 30 to 20 so it's like fucking crazy that he's like number 40 um to be honest <clears throat> Jaeger someone in my chat asks uh who Jaeger is well first somebody says I think that was when I stopped watching comp tf2 I just assumed Freya Tech were going to win every season after that I mean we pretty much did until Banny cut Ash in the middle of our, our playoff game but that's neither here nor there neither here nor there number 39 to answer that Shatter's question of who Jaeger is, Jaeger played um, Soldier in TF2 um, when people could like basically barely rocket jump. Um, he was like the original roaming soldier, so like he found places to hide um, and like shit to do. Like, he was, like, a good player. Like, again, like, you have to give people, like, this props back then because they didn't have any, like, data or, like, videos or, like, people to watch and learn from to, like, do impressive shit. So, like, they start playing TF2 for, like, the first time, essentially, you know, and they're like, oh, my God, like, I'm good. And then they just keep, like, they just keep dominating people until they quit, right? So it's, like, you have to give them props because they didn't, like... It's not like we expect people from, like, 2008 to be, like, C-tapping until, like, fucking high bombs on mid or something, you know? <clears throat> but, um... He was, like, essentially, like, the OG roaming soldier. Like, he he was, like, the first, like, oh, I'll, like, hide and then pick the medic, you know? And, like, I'll just go for, like, medic pick plays and, like, weird, like, roaming soldier plays. Um, so, like, he, he... Sort of, like, the birth of that. Um... But again, he played for two years in 2008. Played four seasons, three, three championships. Again, not all land. Definitely does not deserve a higher ranking than Dewana. Um, I would definitely have him on the top 100 list. Dave got snubbed. Um, I definitely have him on the list, but I would not um, have him this high, especially not if Tawatn is number 40. That's crazy. That's some crazy shit. Tyrone! <laughs> Tyrone. So Tyrone has been out of the gaming life for, I mean, he's associated with, with gaming, but he's been out of like the playing life for quite a long time. He's more of like the entrepreneurial type, which extended into his gameplay because he was the greatest TF2 entrepreneur of all time. He would just get some of the best players to play with him because he was like a good leader. And then those players would, like, pop the fuck off and carry him to a victory. Um, so he did it first where, like, he, he had Banny on his team for a long time. Banny was, like, an incredible player. And then season six, he had YC50, who was, like, a breakout star. Um, and they didn't win season six. But they won the next season, um, season seven against like all these like teams with like the beloved boomers that everybody loves, like the carnage relics, the enigmas, like uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, like they won that season, season seven. Then they lost the next season. Um, the team shuffled. I joined their team in season nine. We won again. Um, against again, like all these like teams with like these like incredible players. Uh, we won season nine. Lost season 10, won season 11. So all of his championships are LAN. Um, he did go to I-46, gets second. <clears throat> but Tyrone did only play for two years. And truth be told, 
truth be told, one of the most, one of the most carried players in all of TF2 history ever is Tyrone. Okay, I would argue even more so than Mackie. Because Mackie had like this weird X factor to him where Mackie like could go fucking like spy or like sniper and like always get an unbelievable like pick on like the medic or like make like a game changing game saving play. And so Mackie was, I think like better than people give him credit for because like people just like think of him as like rocket jump script and like, like bad DM or whatever. And like, he didn't have like his soldier DM was, was not good, but he had like this weird uncanny ability to be like good, like randomly, like really good exactly when you needed it. Um, so like having Tyrone, what what's Matt? I'm not gonna scroll past all these things, but I think Mackie's like something like sixty something or fifty something or some shit like that. Crazy, because the only thing Tyrone has over Mackie is that he was like the team leader, and he did have like a calming demeanor, and he was like pretty good at like just kind of macroing the team and like just communicating and stuff. But he got mega carried, like ultra mega fucking hard carried. Pretty much the entire time. And it only got worse as time went on. Because, like, in season six, seven, or whatever, like, Tyrone was like, eh, eh. But then, like, by the time we got to, like, season 11 and, like, fucking I-46 and shit, like, it was, like, the the soldier diff that was going on between Mixup and our team was, like, tremendous. So, Tyrone, great entrepreneur. <laughs> Uh, high five. Good old Kyle. No, we spoiled it. Kyle. <clears throat> Honestly, most of Kyle's career is like right after I quit. Um, fun trivia. There has never been a combat class player to lead ESCA invite and assist except for high five. That's some, some teammate diff. But as you can see, I mean, he has pretty good, like, uh, accomplishments. Seasons played 12, playoff appearances 9. Um, a lot of versatility in his ability to play different classes. Um, like, I've played a lot with High Five recently, just, like, pugs and shit. And, like, his demo is also pretty good. Um, even though he's known for being like a scout or like started his career as a scout, he has luscious brown or blonde cur curls. That is true. I played him in uh, melee one time at LAN, uh, like a long ass time ago. I knew who High Five was like before I quit or whatever, but like he, when I quit is when he started really like popping off. Um, an invite, but yeah, I mean, High Five is definitely a much better player than Tyrone. And Jaeger. Shrugger. <laughs> Shrugger. Number 36. So this is one of like the more confusing rankings that I've ever seen uh, on this list. Because Shrugger... <laughs> like... Play, played for a really long time. Played like during... Uh, like his coveted um, golden era of TF2 was like known for like even when he played for like being one of the best scouts in the game and like movement wise maybe the best um, so like even just like stats aside and accomplishments and achievements aside just from like the just from the talk about him and like the knowledge that people who played against him and contemporaries had was that he had like really like both good dm and movement and maybe the best movement so like to have him at like number 36 even from that perspective is strange but then you look at like his achievements and you look at what he he did throughout his career and like he's won three times i mean i i don't remember who number 35 is but i'm gonna guess they didn't win three five or three times i'm gonna guess number 35 doesn't have three championships nine playoff appearances and 11 seasons played 
maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm just going to get owned by this list, but I just don't buy it. Um, he started like, on, like Mihai's flow as well. Like he had a disappointing land on Mihai's flow. Um, but that was like one of the best regular season teams that like existed um, in the game at the time. And we fucking owned them at LAN. Oh my God. What a comeback for number four seed at season 11 LAN. But um, he like went from being on flow to just to like joining Banny's team, winning multiple ECA seasons, um, winning or getting, what do they get? Third at I series. Um, and then being after his, his Banny tenure being like the second place slash third place team, um, on like ascent and like Ronin and like that, you know, sponsor group or whatever that kept, uh, like the same players on it the whole time. And then he eventually won. Um, that season I quit. So quite a lot of accomplishments for Shrugger. Um, very strange. He's got some crazy FPH that postseason. I mean, you know we love FPH. Um, top four in FPH up here. But, like, I'm going to guess that, like, the rest of this ranking is not is not going to be. Uh... So, Yite, number 35. Actually, I, didn't think, I thought Yite was a little bit lower than this. Or higher, I guess. Weird. Like, Yite has one championship against Banny. Just like technically Shrugger has, because they knocked us into the lower bracket and then we lost. And that's it. Compared to like Shrugger. So like if I were to put if I were to like I would definitely have Yite. I'd have both of these players much higher than they are, but I would have Shrugger ahead of Yite, probably. Why is squid number sixty? But Yite thirty five. I don't know. Squid got super snubbed as well and like a good ranking like squid number 60 is like crazy like think about the fact like boomer what was boomer again like 45 or something and squid was 60 that's crazy but yite um super talented player beat banny last season has been like a playoff appearing player for 10 of his last 12 seasons um, really good DM, really good mechanics, um, but probably also in the same boat as Shrugger, just way too low on this list. Um, once, once you're, once you're straddling Tyrone here, <laughs> you're probably a little too low on the list. Uh, moving on, Mela. <clears throat> Let's knock it out. Actually, both of them. And one Mela and Rando, 34 and 35, because they're both soldiers for the same team. This is where, like, the list kind of breaks down to me. Because, like, this just seems, I mean, like, it's super hard to make a list like this. But specifically, this, like, group, like, this installment of 10 just seems super, like, lazy. Like, there is no universe where Mela and Rando are both next to each other who are also right next to Shrugger, who are also ahead of Shrugger. Like, there's no universe where that is the reality of the situation. Like, Shrugger was the carry on that team. And he's both outranked by Mela and Rando, who played on the same team as him, who were not as good as Shrugger. Um... And are just like, there's like, like just no, like, there's just no way that these people like are right next to each other. I don't know. Anyway, Mela, um, a really good roamer for his time or soldier in general, I guess. I, I think he played pocket as well for like a, a small amount of time. Um, but I knew Mela mostly for like his 
roamer gameplay, which he did a lot of things that like soldiers kind of do now by default, like Malon Metalworks, I remember, would, would just do like the super high bomb off the roof every single mid, like literally every single mid on, on Metalworks, he would just do the high bomb off the roof or off the side. Um, <clears throat> was like really good um, DM wise, um, was just like a really good player. But from my perspective, like Mela and Rando, and I guess we'll go over Rando as well. Rando, I mean, Rando was also really good DM wise, but like the problem with Rando's teams is that he took like 30% heals as like the soldier. So like think about, okay, think about like how good Shrugger was when he played back then, right? Or whatever, like when he was on that team. And then think about the fact that like that team played with... 30% heals on their pocket soldier. And, like, he still played as well as he did. So, like, Rando's, like, biggest problem was he was just a heal hog. Super big heal hog. But he was, like, really good DM-wise. Um, Rando is, like... Yeah, I don't know. Rando's a really good player. Like, was sort of, like, the leader of the team and, like, the captain of the team. Probably deserves a better ranking than, than Mela, but both of them. Both of them probably deserve this specific ranking, like around this area, like around 30, but not higher than Yite and Shrugger, I think. Um, yeah. Because Shrugger also, like, Shrugger also won with, like, Banny or whatever, so he has, like, more championships as well. Um, so... I don't know. There's no conceivable way that you look at like these careers and these career numbers and stuff. And then you say like, yeah, it makes sense. Melee and Rando um, should be higher than Shrugger. It's just crazy. Um, but anyway, Psy Guy number 32. This is another situation where I feel like putting Psy Guy like ahead of like Shrugger is just like so weird to me. I don't really have like a specific, I, I don't really know much about Psy Guy. Like he like, again, like played like, or like was a good invite player like after I had quit. Um <clears throat> but uh Yeah I don't know like with Psy Guy he won one championship with Banny. So like every Banny championship is like for some people like a, a Mickey Mouse type ring or whatever. Um but Psy Guy Psyguy is another one of those people that I would maybe have, like, in this general area, but not ahead of these people. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know enough about Psyguy to, like, have, like, a, an insightful idea. Patty um, definitely seems too low to me. What year did I quit? Like, 20, technically, like, 2016, I guess. But that's only because I came back for a season. So, like, Overwatch came out 2015, like, late 2015, closed beta. Then it went down, like, around, like, New Year's time to be, like, worked on for a full release. So, like, within that, like, three-month span of time or some ridiculous amount of time that they didn't, um, that, like, Overwatch, like, wasn't available to be played, um, I played, like, one final season of TF2 which was technically in 2016. But I, like, kind of stopped playing for real in, like, 2015. Um, Patty definitely deserves a better ranking than 31. Like, kind of crazy accomplishments to be number 31. 15 seasons played, 12 playoff appearances, 5 championships, including... Um, Rewind 2, which is, like, what? Technically, like, a like an international, right? Um, but, like, Patty's always been, like, known as being, like, a very, like, mechanically skilled player, as well as being, like, an intelligent player, like, within the game. So, just kind of weird to me. Uh, she definitely, definitely deserves a better ranking than 31. Um... 
because he not only has experience like in the golden era, but then like of an extremely successful uh, career afterwards. Moving on, number 30. So J, number 30. This is always where it gets hard for me because I think J from like a like a talent perspective, from like a skill perspective is like easily like a top 15 player all time. Um but hasn't played that long so you can like justify that he is like not that high so <laughs> i like how he goes into the market gardener and stuff but yeah um Probably deserves a better ranking, but you can't put him at like the ranking that you want to put him at because he just simply hasn't played that long. But like even just looking at the like the current achievements that he has, like they're pretty good. Like it's funny that like you look at like a boomer that like you literally subtract ten from the years from both years here. And like some boomer like Jaeger has like a really good ranking. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think he probably deserves a better ranking. There's probably people you can like find to put ahead of him or put behind him, like the fragile probably. Um, but he is, yeah, I don't know. Talent wise, definitely like easily like a, like a top, top 10 probably player that I played against just off the top of my head in NA at least, uh, the fragile number 29. So fragile is like one of those medics that played for fucking ever. Um, yeah, the, the year's active refers only to, to invite. Um, 29 Fragile, like Fragile was active in, in invite from 2008 to 2015. <laughs> um, so like a really fucking long time, like crazy amounts of longevity. Is the Fragile the only zero championship player at this point? Yeah, I think so. He, I think he's the last one um, in this group of people. So fragile. I don't like necessarily disagree with like this ranking. Um, I just possibly disagree with like who might be behind him. Like fragile played a really fucking long time. And he was like one of the best medics in the game, like from literally 2008 to 2015, uh, which is like, pretty hard to do and pretty crazy and he's also like a really cool guy so that's like easily like plus 10 on the rankings um but i don't yeah i don't necessarily disagree with it i mean like people like him need to have like they need to have need to get props for what they did in the game for as long as they did it and yeah, he played for, for 10 seasons, nine playoff appearances, was a really good medic the whole time. So um, definitely agree with him, like in his placement compared to other medics for sure that are on this list. Sizer, number 28. Sizer is so much, his ranking is so much worse than it should be. I hate like saying higher and lower. Because lower implies, like, lower on, like, the number line <laughs> or whatever going in reverse. But, like, every time I say lower, I mean, like, he should have a lower number. Um, but he, he has, like, such a, a bad ranking here. Like, look at how fucking long Sizer played for. Look at how fucking long he played. 2008 to 2016, 19 seasons played, 16 playoff appearances, four championships. So, like, he was a really good player 
in Evil Geniuses back when the game had sponsors, sort of sponsors. They didn't actually like pay them salary or anything, but Evil Geniuses like with reptile sickness like a long ass fucking time ago. So he was like scouting against like people like Carnage, and then like he kept playing and was like a top in by player when like other players that played from his era just kind of either quit or fell off. He like kind of maintained a level of consistency which is like a testament to his like ability to adapt I think. Like I never thought Sizer was like an incredibly good player like from a talent perspective. Um Charis Bro, thanks for the tier one sub. Um But yeah, I mean <laughs> From like an individual standpoint, Sizer was never insane, and I never thought he was like an insane player. But he was always like a relevant scout for as long as he played. Um and that starts in, in the year two thousand and eight, which is fucking crazy. But he was even like to to twenty sixteen when he was like finally like kind of getting out of the game, like he was still like a relevant and good scout just because he could he understood how to play the game and he understood how to adapt. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think Sizer deserves a much better ranking than this. Um, I mean, we won together two times. We got second at I-46. We went, did we win together? No, and then he played on, on Banny's team with Shrugger, and then they won two more times. Um, but yeah, he... I don't know, he's won a lot. I have like personal experience with him playing alongside him, and I think he should be ranked much better um Pfizer streams yeah I think he deserves much better then he got Alpha Alpha is like another one of those like difficult rankings because he played for so long but he never won so like as long as Alpha played and like his ability to like play a bunch of different classes at like a high level is valuable but i just can't justify putting him ahead of like Pfizer or even like shrugger because he very much is like the swiss army knife of tf2 but i don't really think that that should be like better than like people who have had like truly like illustrious careers um like winning and shit all the time in the game so just it's sort of like a weird ranking because like alpha is like obviously a very talented player and like played for so long and was like good when it was the golden age and is good like again now um but like, it just it just doesn't feel right to like put him like ahead of people who have literally won like five times. I mean, like maybe you could argue that if he was on Freya Tech, he would have won five times. But that's like really hard to like. I don't know. That's not. A you have that's like just a hypothetical. You have no idea if that's true. But also like, he would have been on Freya Tech if he was like better than Dewatna at the time at demo. Or he was like better than like I don't know some soldier player we were picking up. But, like, he wasn't, you know? So it's, like, I don't know. To have him, like, number 27 and Steve 40 <laughs> is kind of crazy. Relic number 26. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess Relic was like never to me like a standout soldier. Like he wasn't bad, but like when he played with like Platt and shit on like Mix Up, um, like on that team with like Enigma, he was sort of just like solid. So this is where like sort of like the, the championships and the playoff appearances and stuff like are weighted more than what I think of um, aren't there a lot more players in competitive team now so wouldn't the golden age be now? I don't really know about like the player 
count and stuff because that's like sort of just like i think if you use like rgl as like a baseline that's like kind of hard <clears throat> to argue because like esca was definitely more prestigious but like cost money like a lot of money to actually play because you had to like subscribe to the fucking thing and like to play like open even you had to like you know pay a certain amount of money um but i'm only using golden age to refer to like what the author refers to as golden age i don't really have any like specific opinions about it um but yeah i don't know relic is like one of those players where like talent wise like individually like my perception of how good he was is probably ranked lower or like not as good as what his accomplishments give him but i wouldn't really disagree with his ranking 26 like seems okay to me i guess although i mean not really because again like there are players that are way better than him that are ranked much worse but i think if i were just to envision a list in my head that he would like be somewhere around 30 so maybe he's like a little bit inflated but You dead ass let ESCA farm Bitcoin for another year after TF2 is done. God damn it, Habib. God damn it, number five. He was also not the greatest equalizer abuser. He just had one clip of him swinging an equalizer on point and killing a bunch of clueless players that couldn't just like shoot a soldier one time and kill them. So for that, he gets, like, the... Like, that is such a meme -y clip. I don't know. I know people, like, really like that clip, but it's so fucking stupid. He's literally spinning around, swinging his equalizer on the point, killing people. Not a single player could touch him. Like... Does that mean I deserve number one for being the best sword player in fucking TF2? Come on. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Relic has a lot of championships won. Shouldn't be better than, than like Steve or, or Shrugger though. Laz 25. Laz is another one of like those Marmalu type situations where Laz has like incredible like mechanics on Soldier. Um, and he beat Manny last season, which is really big. So for me, having him like around here, like around number 20 is probably where I would put Laz. So I don't really necessarily disagree with the ranking. He also has Pikachu as his Pokedex number, which is like fucking huge. But yeah, I would have him probably more in the teens or near like, near like number 20. Um, but I, I mean, I, I don't really have like the personal... Like, other than, like, playing against him in pugs and stuff, I don't have, like, that personal experience against him that makes me think that he's, like, way better or worse than he is or whatever. Because um, he played after I quit. Firmly after I quit. So, last, Jay, Laz and Jay have set the standard for modern-day soldier. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's definitely true. <sighs> Reptile. Number 24. My boy. So Adam was really fucking good, actually. Um, he's like one of the few boomers that like was actually really good. Um, was like the best soldier in the game. Was also really good at demo. He has like that like notorious clip of him on like gravel pit where he like air shots like three people trying to defend C or whatever, and like barely misses the last pipe that he would have hit if he had the iron bomber that is used today. So if you just substitute the Iron Bomber for all those pipes that Reptile shot in that video, he wins. By the way, he wins that. But number 24, Reptile was like even good. So this was Reptile's career, right? He played Soldier for a while, blah, 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 blah. I think he like took a little bit of a break. And then like he was on Experiment for season nine. 
with like dummy uh Justin White. Where is there Soldier? Wonderwall? He was like on that team for season nine. And he was playing Scout. And he Scout was definitely a class that he was not good at. Um and he eventually got cut for Carnage. Um and that was around the time that we learned that CB was getting married um, and couldn't make LAN, which is like ridiculous. Cause like, why would you not just put up your wedding for UCLM? But we needed to like either put Mackie on medic or reptile on medic um, to go to LAN. And Reptile was actually really good at Soldier. Like we had him at first like just kind of playing Soldier because like it made more sense in our brain to put like Reptile, like one of the greatest soldiers of all time on Soldier and then put like Mackie who like was like known for his ability to like off class and stuff, just like on Medic and fill, up, fill on Medic. And when Reptile played, he was actually really good at Soldier. Like DM wise, like he was really good. Um, he just was also better than Mackie at Medic. So we put reptile on medic to just sort of fill and like keep our combat classes like the same consistency that we've always had them at um with like Mackie and his off classing and all that shit um and reptile was really good at medic and we won that land with reptile on medic um so yeah i don't know reptile was like a really really good player and like i think he should be if we're, if we're gonna like glorify like boomers for being like trailblazers in their own right reptile was very much a trailblazer for soldier and he should be ranked higher um because you'll see in a few rankings why he should be ranked higher pure number 23 i don't necessarily disagree with this i think maybe pure could have like squeezed his way in as like a top 20 player um, but 23 isn't like too egregious or anything pure was like always like one of the best medics in the game and like was known for having like a mind for the game won three times beat me at i46 because his team was significantly better than mine and um yeah so that's that's pretty much that he was also pretty decent at like demo and like combat classes um, that other medics didn't really have the versatility to play. Um, he did kill my team in season 15. Um, but if that didn't happen, maybe Freya Tech never would have happened. So, um, yeah, he was he was really good. I don't disagree with this this ranking at all. Um, I think he's definitely like the best of the medics who have been listed already in terms of like legacy. Uh, Carter, number 22. So I feel like in Ash's case, he's easily also somebody who could have been from 10 to 20. In the thread I mentioned after season 15, Froyo made changes. Yeah, they lost a mix up in season 15. So, season 15, I was on Watch This before the season started, which was a team with me, Pure, Dummy Blaze, Justin, and Milo. And we were like really good. And then, like, just some drama shit happened and we, our team died before the season started. But then I played in main. I didn't play like invite that season and like mix up wound up beating Danny's team in the finals. So then we next season like remade or made Freyo Tech, but swapped around the, the pieces. We took like Banny and Shade from, uh, from that team and then combined it with uh, myself, dummy place. Um, But 
But Ash, I feel like, is somebody who could be easily from like 10 to 20. He played with us on Freyotech, um, won a championship there. Would have probably won another one if like that drama didn't happen during that playoff match. Um, but also won um, I-55 with us. So, and then he came back and then beat Banny again last season. So he has, he has not only a non-Banny championship, but also a Banny championship. And has always been like a pretty solid player. So I think there is definitely a world where he could have been a little bit higher, but I guess we'll see who is ahead of him to make that decision. Yeah, see, like I, I think Ash definitely deserves a better ranking than bot mode. Um, so, I don't know, maybe he gets, like, more for, like, having Demo Man there? I, I, don't, I don't really know. Because, again, like, Ash is both, Ash won um, on Scout for us on Froyotech for that ESA season and for um, I-55. So, and then he went on to beat Banny on Soldier later. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, bot mode, like, seems to be really highly ranked here based on who he is ahead of. But definitely deserves to be, like, on this side of the top 100. I probably wouldn't have him above Ash. Or like Laz. Or Sizer. Um, but yeah, definitely deserves to be like in this in this area of the list. You wanted to have them in the top twenty, huh? All right. Before we get into this next installment of the list. Let's just, um, we'll swap real quick to just my face. Number 20, we have a redacted name that I feel like, if I were being honest here, probably shouldn't be on the list and could have just been replaced by Dave AC. So let's just get that out of the way. And now we're on number 19. Here we are on number 19. We got Dummy! Who just found his way to number 19 on this list. Let's fucking go, Tim. <laughs> fucking yeehaw. <clears throat> okay. Number 19. Somehow Dummy has made his way onto number 19 on the list here. Um, surprising that he's ahead of Dave AC at number 20, but, um, or Moose at number 20, uh, but Tim is another one of those people who played like fucking forever. Um, he's a lot like Sizer in that regard, but like took multiple breaks in the middle of, of like his career or whatever. Um, was always like a talented player and could play the thing about Tim is he literally never played the game. Like, he will admit that he never played the game. Like, he literally, like, he never pugged. He would, like, get on for, like, a scrim play and then not play and, like, play a match and then not play um, until the next scrim or match. So, like, for the amount of time he spent on the game, he was... Good. I mean, he was always like a top three demo, I would say, in Invite. Um, all the way back when he played it, like, with Reptile and shit. Because um, that's how long he's played the game. Um, but, I mean, he came in on Freyotech. We had him on 
demo at first, and then we moved him over to scout because, like, I don't know. Banny has a very particular way of, of his teams running, and, like, the classes just weren't working. So we had, like, Dummy on scout for, like, a brief amount of time with, like, me on scout and Banny on demo. And then by the end, um, at LAN, we put Dummy back on demo. Uh, and Tim kind of owned, actually, at demo, TBH. Uh, at that land, he like kind of shit on them. Um, but yeah, no, he's definitely higher ranked than he should be. Like, there's no way that like dummy should be higher ranked than Dewatna for, even if we're just looking at it in like this, from the scope of like demo players, like there's no way dummy is like a better demo, even legacy wise, uh, than Dewatna. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Dummy is, um, definitely too high on this list, but <laughs> they fucked up by putting, by putting dummy on number at number 19, he's going to make fun of every single TF2 player until another list is made that has more traction than this list. So <clears throat> let's fucking go to him. Number 18 carnage. This is like a weird thing for me because Carnage Dude, there's so many meat shots. Wait, wait. Actually no. I was gonna I was gonna play like Infinity or some shit, but let's let's keep it professional, okay? Carnage is like one of those players where I feel like relax. Everyone thinks or I think that everybody thinks that like players like myself or whatever came into the scene basing our game style off of Carnage or like really like um just like wanting to be like idolizing Carnage and like stealing his gameplay. But that, at least for me, I mean, maybe this is the, like different for other people, but like the scout that got me into playing scout was like Walters. And if I was to put an NA player there, it'd be like Enigma or Moose. Cause Moose was like an ammo mod Lord back then before I started playing competitively or like on the brink of when I started playing competitively. And Moose was really good at scout who also, by the way, got snubbed. So Moose was really, like, Moose, Enigma, Walters were really more of, like, my, my, like, early um, influences for Scout. Um, so this is, all, this is also one of those things where, like, you look at his championships and, like, I think he only won one LAN event. Which isn't, like, awful. I mean, he has, you know, two online championships and uh, an online championship. Um, pretty much perpetual playoff appearancer. But, like, I don't really rate Carnage that much higher than, like, Reptile. Or, like, honestly, even, like, even, like, Relic. Because Carnage, like, popped off on Scout early on, so everybody has this, like, really, like, high... Um, they, like, rate him really highly because they watched, like, Meat Shot Volume 1, 2, and 3 where he was, like... Literally in the first Meat Shot, he didn't double jump once. But like, that's beside the point. Relic also lasted way longer than Carnage. And one after Carnage. And one more lands than Carnage. Um... But he's definitely, like, he definitely deserves a really high ranking on this list, but I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't put Carnage above Sizer, for example. Like, Sizer literally played over double the seasons that Carnage played. And won more than Carnage played at LAN. All LAN wins. And simply because of, like, Carnage's, like, ability in like 2009 
and, and early 10, I guess. Um, or an eight, but 2008 is like a meme year. He gets like a really, really high ranking, I think. Um, but yeah, I, would, I wouldn't put Carnage like above like Ash or, or uh, Shrugger, Sizer. A hell of a lot of people that came before him. Um, yeah. Definitely deserves to be on the list. Like, was an influential player in his own right that he, like, kind of came in and, like, was the first scout that was, like, talented enough to, like, play scout in, like, that way. But, like, even even toward, like, even, like, toward, like, season nine, when I won season nine, like, he was not, like... Carnage was not like a top performing scout. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably rated too highly. Um, just sort of based off of like meat shot and like his meat shot volumes and stuff. My fucking boy. So at first I was worried that like YZ was going to be like rated worse than Carnage because to me YZ50 was really more like the Carnage of when I played um, where like I started like Walters and like even earlier than that like Enigma and like Moose were like really big inspirations for me to play Scout but like when YZ was popping off like he was the person I looked at as like Carnage He's, like, in terms of, like, talent in the game, of, like, people I played against, he's, like, up there with, like, Jay, you know? Like, his just, like, his talent level was so high um, in, in TF2 that it's a testament to how high he was or high, how high he is on this list for how little he played and how little he actually achieved in the game from, like, a championship perspective. So he played for three years, six seasons played, playoffs every season. Came out with like a huge win season seven where like people didn't expect it um, with like the Tyrone squad. And like ever since then was like, you know, just it was like what, like me and him and like Ruin, I guess, for like the best like scout players, like aim mechanics players in, in TF2. Um and pretty much like was that good uh until the day that he just quit and he also had like a little uh affair with quake in like the middle of his tf2 career and he just shit on people in quake um so ben yz50 is one of like the best stats mechanics players ever um and yeah i don't know he is definitely properly rated i would put him even higher if i were just to rank like my own personal bias like how good were they uh list but uh, i'm definitely super glad that he made it this high on the list especially like above um like i would i would have him above like sizer just for like mechanical ability alone. But number 16, Ruin. Ruin was like a weird case um, where he played for a really long time, took a long break and then played again. And he was really good at scout. Um, but sort of like fell off very quickly in a weird way. Uh, when I played against him, when he was on like Mihai's flow or whatever, he was like insanely fucking good. Insanely good. That was like what, season nine or 11? Season 11? He was insanely good on that, on that team, that land. 
then I feel like every other LAN, like every other time I played against him, he he wasn't as good as he was on that. Like, for example, when I went to I-46, I feel like I was far and away the best scout of that LAN. And, like, especially when I think of, like, back to when I was, like, playing against Ruin, like, I feel like I was just owning. Where when I played against him on Mihai's Flow, like, he just, like, I thought he was just, like, the best. Um, so I, I think he, like, kind of fell off very quickly. And that was even evident when we played... We had him on Froyotech for the first, like, month or something of Froyotech's existence. And he was, like... I don't know. Like, really, like, not as good as he was, like, the seasons before. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It was weird. But he was really, really, really fucking good when he was, like, in his prime. So, definitely, like, deserved for him to be, like, number 16. Um... And he also, like, has, like, super old-school experience, too, where, like, he won with, like, 20 ID or whatever uh, with Siegel, so. Do I read chat? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm also reading the list. Am I talking to you? What is this weird, like, bravado thing that you're doing? Go take a shower. Um... But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. His, his career was weird because he was so good and I thought that like Ruin was going to be just like the best scout in the game like by far until like the day he quit which like wasn't really the case. Where's Servo? Snubbed. Enigma number 15. I feel like Enigma to me is like a top 10 player. And maybe that's like a weird maybe that's weird but for me I think Enigma is like at least number 10 because enigma played for such a long time was like always consistently one of the best scouts in the game from like every perspective that you can like look at scout like mechanically like uh mentally like he was just a really good player um And he was as much of, like, a part in mix-up success as, like, somebody like Platt was. So it's, like, he also, like, succeeded before Platt did. Like, he was on, like, that team with Carnage before Platt was even on the team. And then they made mix-up, and then he just, everything, like, that Platt, you know, achieved, Enigma achieved. So, like, Enigma was always, like, a really, really good player. And, yes, also true. He was also impressively good for how little he played. Enigma was also one of those people, like, he didn't pug and shit. He just, like, played scrims and matches. And he was, it, like, really fucking good. And then I played, like, Overwatch with him, and he was really good at Overwatch, too. Like, Enigma is just, like, a really good gamer. And, obviously, you can't, like, take Overwatch into account when you, like, do this ranking or whatever. But, like, I personally know how, like, smart and good of a player he is just like in any game he plays. So I don't know. To me, I think he's a top 10 player. Um, around since the beginning. Hella championships. Crazy, crazy amounts of skill. Probably to me a top, a top 10 player. Eric is maybe the weirdest ranking in this list because I don't necessarily like agree or disagree. But it is so hard to see somebody who won 13 championships and made playoffs essentially every single season he played at number 14. I mean, like, I know he dominated really, like, I do really see that era of TF2 being, like, a little bit, like, the author of this list refers to that as like the dark ages of TF2, which like I kind of agree with. I mean, like it's hard for me, like it sounds like salty for me to like quit and then like see a bunch of people who are like, you know, achieving shit like without me and being like, 
everybody sucks now. But I think there was like a a, a real like a, a real decline in the game um, during that during that time. Um, but dude, thirteen championships is fucking crazy, man. Like that's insane. I feel like you take one of the people in the top 10 out of the top 10 for Eric based on 13 championships alone. <laughs> that's fuck. I mean, like, yeah, they're Banny championships, but that's fucking crazy. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm talking to somebody. Um, anyway, sorry. Let's talk to somebody. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like you take somebody out of the top 10 to put Eric in there because that's fucking crazy, man. Like, 13 fucking wins. They're all Banny wins, but 13 is, is crazy. And he, like, dominated, like, that entire era of TF2 to the moment that he quit, right? He didn't quit on a, on a loss or anything. He just quit. So, I don't know. That's crazy. TLR number 13. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Oh, he quit on a cup loss. Um, yeah, no, TLR definitely deserves to be in, in this like area because he was another one of those players that kind of like redefined soldier at the time. TLR and I have like a really long history because we played together, um, like out of like a, a community pub. Um, and like, you can see like me in like the kill feed and shit, like in his like first like frag video or whatever like he like just jump started out of that like community of like right onto pandemic or whatever um so tlr and i have like quite a long history together like i've known him since i was like 16 years old or some shit um but tyler was another one of those people that like just redefined soldier for what for what it was because he was so good mechanically that um, he like really brought the air shot into like the mainstream, you know what I mean? Like people air shot people before that, but Tyler always had like the craziest air shots. Um, that might not even be something that people do anymore because like it's kind of inefficient to go for air shots all the time on soldier. You might as well just jump again, um, or spoon them. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't necessarily disagree with this. I I wouldn't put TLR as like a top ten player. Um, because there are just so many players in the top 10 that like deserve it uh, so yeah I mean I'd have him somewhere here if I were to like just make a list in my, in my head and just throw him at like a random number it would be like close to the top 10 but like not in the top 10 probably um, he, he also had like a, a really like a falling off era like, especially when he came back on Banny's team for that one time in 2016. And they got smacked around at a I whatever, 60 whatever. Or 58 or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would say that's a, that's a fair ranking. Slumnish is another one of these people who... Um, like has his ranking more based on his like mechanical ability um that like more so than his his wins and his championships um because you know he's only won once but like was always a top like performing uh scout and i i mean I, even i know slumnish like slumnish played like when i was like sort of like making my way out of the scene and he was always like sort of like a pug star scout um but yeah, in terms of like his actual 
achievements like it's lacking compared to like some of these other people who have won like 13 times um but i would definitely have him in this area slumdish is like the like yz50 to me um in his uh when you compare his skill to his his achievements so in, in my head i would have them like very close to each other because they, they both fulfill like the same idea where they're just really really talented uh mechanical players who like won once you know um but yeah like stats wise he's always like you know number two in fph lansky lansky number 11 i think this is actually fair I don't know. This is where, like, if you have, like, a real top 10, you have to, like... I guess I can, like, try to make my own top 10 after this list is done, but it's, like, so hard to, like, see... To, like, take somebody else out of the top 10 if I'm already taking Eric or putting Eric in the top 10. Um, Lansky was another one of those. He's, like, almost TLR-esque where Lansky's, like, mechanics on Soldier were kind of just, like, super different um, to, to other Soldiers at the time. And when I played with Lansky, he was also a really good leader. Like, he could macro really well, like, the whole state of the game and shit. So, I don't know. Lansky's, um... I would say this is, like, the fairest placement that I, I could give him. It would either be, like, from here like number 11 or somewhere in the top 10. Um, but yeah. All right. This is where uh, he broke the top 10 into two different installments. So let's go from number 10 to number six. Yeah, Lansky was in my chat actually a couple weeks ago. I think during the last time I did this. Hard blue number 10. So Harb definitely I see as a top ten player. Um, Harb was like one of the more. He was like Mackie if Mackie had like put time into the game and had like the same level of talent, because Harb Blue could do like really weird things like Mackie could do like just sort of like an X factor in games that would like get really key picks or like make like something out of nothing. Um, and was also a really good medic, but he has like achievements like dating back to, yeah, like season six and then like more, you know, uh, golden age era wins. Like when he beat Vanny's team season 15, that like brought Freyo tech like into, um, fruition. So hard blue is like definitely a top 10 player. I'll have to see who the rest are to really adequately rank see like Bedonsky number nine like Bedonsky was a crazy good player but I think putting him so much higher than someone like Dewana is just disingenuous because Bedonsky was really good but I would put him maybe slightly ahead of of Dewana I would obviously move Dewana way higher up the list like he wouldn't be number 40 but in my vision, Badonsky and, and Duana would be a lot closer to each other. Um, Badonsky was always like really good. He actually pissed me the fuck off when I played against him because I was like playing against like double donk bullshit and it raged the fuck out of me. Um, but if you look at his achievements, like he did only win once. Yes, it's all it's about like you know it's against Banny and shit, so it's hard to win when you're playing against Banny. Um, but it just still seems a little bit out of place to have Badonsky at number nine. Like, would people really disagree if you swap Badonsky and Eric? Like, I feel like that's... makes more sense to me. Because um, I remember looking at this list, like, when it came out, and seeing Badonsky at number nine was, like, really surprising to me. Because I... 
100% expected him to be around top 10, but like actually breaking into the top 10 was surprising to me. Um, it's always where the list gets like confusing because you have to make hypothetical arguments, you know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, but if Donsky was on Fury Tech, he would have won a thousand more times, which I agree with, but that's just not the reality. <laughs> so, you know, like, I don't know. It, it's hard to make that argument because that just didn't happen. And like, there's no way to be sure that that would happen. It probably would, like, logically speaking, it would. But like, you can't just like create a hypothetical and be like, oh, well, if he was on, you know, Freyo, he would have 14 championships just like Eric. Like, I mean, that's, that's like way more subjective than like whatever the list is using to rank people. So it's like tough, you know? I agree that like losing against Banny counts way less than losing in general. But I wouldn't say that, like, losing, you know, 10 championships or whatever to Banny, like, wins out over winning 13 championships with Banny. Like, I don't know. He also, like, sort of won against Banny. I know before I said technically they won against us, but... They sent us to the lower bracket, and then Ash got cut in the middle of our game, and then we lost the showstopper. So we didn't. He didn't actually win a grand finals again. Like the same thing happened last season, twenty one. Yeah, when I quit the last season, I played before I fully quit for Overwatch. They did the same thing. They dropped us into the lower bracket, and then we came back in the grand finals and beat them twice. What is the sort of win? Because if you're going to use winning against Banny as context to being really important, you have to make sure you actually win against Banny in the grand finals. What do you mean? That's like a huge difference. Like that's an enormous difference. Like if you're going to use winning against Banny as like the litmus test for every single one of your, your rankings, then like actually being the one to knock Banny out of the tournament is way more important than like being the first win against somebody in the playoffs. Why, though, if you beat him in playoffs, it doesn't... Of course it counts, but it doesn't count, like, as much as, like, if, like, literally... You, I could use the same hypothetical argument to be like, okay, well, we could have come back if Ash didn't get cut, and then we could have won that last season. So it's like, I don't know. He was, like, definitely, like, a top... He's absolutely by no metric of, like, anybody's logic could ever be lower than, than 20, ever. Like, he's easily a top 20 player, but I would not put Bedonsky at number nine. Especially when his teammates, like Shrugger and Mela and Rando, are 30-something. Like, I don't know. That's crazy. Like, Shrugger also won that championship. Where's Shrugger? Is it where... It, he's number 36. <laughs> so... I don't know. I feel like it's, it's definitely fair to move somebody like Eric into the top 10 over Bonanski. But Bonanski, definitely an incredible player, actually annoyed the fuck out of me when I played against him. <clears throat> Probably like the most annoying demo besides Habib that I played against. I guess he was like incredibly good. And here I'm going to piss you guys off again. And say, Siegel as number eight is a massive overrate. Hello, overrated. Absolutely a top 20 player. Definitely not a top 10 player. Un undeniably true. Like, he, he won two times. One time was in season three. By the way, again, I don't know if you guys... Season three... He might have won against Solid Snake on the Charge and Targe. Okay, so let's take that into consideration. So first at a non-LAN. In like 2008. And then won one other time against Banny. But, not, but this is where, again, people like, oh, he won against Banny, but did he win against Clockwork and Banny? No, he didn't. 
So like, I don't know, was that HRG team as good as Freyotech? Like, do you rank all the wins against Banny the same? Like, cause when we were on Freyotech, it's me, Banny and Blaze. When he, when he won against HRG, it was him, Sizer, and like RR, and like, I don't know. I mean, it was a win against Banny, but that was like, definitely not the strongest Banny team. So, like, he literally beat somebody in season 15 who's not even on this list, which is a snub. I think RR deserves to be on this list, but literally one of the players he beat isn't even on this list. So, I mean, Siegel, I would put as, as like a top 20 player for sure. Maybe in terms of like skill, if I were to like make just a subjective, like who are my top 10 players that I've played against ever, I would have Siegel in there potentially. But like from like the logic of the list, I feel like Siegel at number eight is a gigantic over eight. Gigantic. It's, it's super fan service for sure. Um, because he wasn't I mean it's hard to be like far and away the best roamer in the game but like Siegel and and Blaze were very close in impact and skill on roamer even when Siegel was like at his like prime in like ESCA season 15, 16, 17 whatever um they were like very close in skill. Like Blaze was not like by any means like a hard number two or whatever. Um in, in best like roamers in the game, you know? <clears throat> so I don't know. I, I think that's like a huge overrate. Like I would definitely move Siegel and Badonsky out of the top ten for like Eric and like I don't know, some other player that I would take from the the twenties probably or the, the teens. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of skill, sure, maybe, maybe I'd have him as like number eight in like my, my most skilled top 10 players that I ever played against in TF2, but definitely not if utilizing the logic of this, uh, of this list, this is just like a really big, like, uh, like sort of like a fan ranking, I think more than anything. Um, Yomps. <clears throat> Yomps number seven. Yomps another one of those players as well, by the way, that I would have in potential top ten like players I ever played against um in the game. I remember uh season twenty one when I came back again, like when Overwatch went down, closed beta went down or whatever, and I came back before the game came out. Um I played that ascent team that we beat in the grand finals was Yomps was just fucking insane. Like, I remember, like, coming back, because I took a little bit of a break from TF2, and I was, like, it was just, like, immediately harder for me to play the game because I came from fucking Overwatch, and, like, everything's, like, zip-zapping, like, back and forth, AD spamming, like, blinking back and forth um, compared to, like, the more slippery-type movement that, that TF2 has. So I was already, like, not where I thought I wanted to be. And then like every time I played against Yomps, he just shit on me. Like in terms of like damage exchanges, like I knew every single time when it was Yomps, he would just like fucking shit on me. Um, and then I missed, unfortunately, the majority of his career because I was playing Overwatch. Um, but definitely like Hella Championships, one of the most talented, skilled players ever played the game. Um, and was always like yeah for me like one of the hardest players to play against even before he was like on a team that was that good like even when he was like um, when he was like playing earlier in 2015 like he was just like insanely good yep. <clears throat> what made him so good I don't know he was just a good point and clicker like he was like one of those players that could like play Soldier, 
Um, who could like play any of the projectile classes and like be just as like skilled as when he played Scout. He just like had like a, a real mastery of TF2, where you could argue like someone like myself like is woof, unbelievably better at like Scout compared to like fucking Soldier or whatever. Um, but definitely deserve number seven. Uh, I wish I like got to new Yomps more. Um, but yeah, but definitely one of the, uh, the, the best, best players ever play TF2. So, um, shade. Shade number six. Um, this is where it's always hard because you have to like take classes they're playing into account. Like when somebody in melee makes like a top 100 list and like somebody's looking at the top 10 melee players of all time, it's much easier to be like number six. I don't know. You really think he should be six and this guy should be five because they play like the same game, you know, like there's nothing, they play like different characters, but like it's essentially the same game being played. Whereas like, in TF2, there are, like, you're just a cog in the machine. Like, you have to do a certain thing for your team. So, like, if you're a roaming soldier, you're not going to have as much, like, impressive stats as, like, someone like myself who could just run around and, like, kill everything, you know? Um, but it's really hard to, like, rank, I agree, to, like, rank medics um, next to fragging classes. It's just really hard. It's, like, an impossibly difficult thing. For me, like most medics would always, I always tend to underrate medics, like on purpose, compared to braggers. Because a lot of the time, especially in Shade's case, like they played medic because they were the best at medic. And like, I don't know. A lot of the times playing medic on Banny's team is just like, take your free win. Um, so, I mean, he's definitely, like, the most decorated medic that's ever played, I would say. Um, and was actually, like, surprisingly good at, like, different classes. Like, he could play, like, Soldier and Demo. Um, he just, like, knew how to play the game. I mean, at a certain point, like, when you win 13 championships, you, like, definitely know how to play the game. So you can have, like, any amount of impact on, uh, on different classes, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. Shade, I, w I would like to put medics at, like, I, I wish every installment had a medic at the top. So, like, number 20, number 10, 30, 40, 50. Because to me, like, if I was going to put Shade in the top 10, I'd just put him at 10. Because he was, like, really good, but it's hard for me to put Shade ahead of, like, our blue. Who was also, like, as good as Shade at Medic, honestly, but also was a really good soldier. Um, I don't know. Medic is weird. A lot, like, a lot of his wins are just, like, we felt like we couldn't lose that season. <laughs> Especially after, like, season, um, like, season 17, 18, just felt like you, we couldn't lose. So, I mean, he definitely, I would put him at like top 10 in terms of just like his achievements and like impact on the game. But, um, it's hard for me to put him ahead of like some of the other top 10 players. I mean, most medics would absolutely shine on a Banny team. I mean, they did. It becomes exponentially easier to play medic when you're playing with like the best fragging classes in the game. And that's just like sort of the way that it is. I don't know. So let's go to number five now. This is where shit gets really spicy. So we got Habib number five. I think Habib should be higher than number five. Um, just for like his utter dominance on demo. Um, Habib was like, Habib is just the most annoying demo I've ever played against. Um, it's unfortunate that like all of that skill or whatever is simply just because the Iron Bomber is legal. 
Um, but he's like really fucking good. And like, besides myself, like the closest person to like Banny, like a lot of the time when you look at a Banny team, I feel like ever since I quit, especially Banny teams are looked at as like just Banny teams. You know what I mean? Um, like Banny is just like the best player and that's it. Like B Banny, oh, Banny team. Banny's just going to carry like these other five players, like, which is always like disingenuous because like he purposely picks up really good players so that like he doesn't have to carry them. But like Habib is like the best player on that team. Like he's like the me of Demo Man, but like Demo Man is like so unbelievably like overwhelming as like a as a fucking class um that it's almost like even better right like because i was like obviously like like one and two with banning when we played together but like we're just playing scout which is like yeah i had like a lot of crazy like fucking kill streaks and like frag fucking fph and shit uh but like demo a really good demo just like takes over the entire fucking game and it's like very reminiscent of when Banny was the best demo in the game before he played Scout, but better because like Habib just runs around like killing everything. Um, so like in terms of like a top five, I would have him for sure higher than five. Um, yeah, it's just unfortunate he would be even higher if the Iron Bomber were banned because I know he's really good at pipes. So. Um, Blaze number four. I would probably swap these two, but it, again, it's hard because Blaze is like, actually, no, 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 wait, just wait. So Blaze, one of my like favorite teammates to play with because he was like unimaginably chill. Like Blaze was like maybe the chillest person I've ever played with for like, for skill wise in terms of skill compared to, uh, other people he was just very quiet and would just do his job and would like not even talk to like to a fault sometimes like we would like lose mids and like i just want us to fucking win a mid so like on the way to mid i'm like so blaze where are you going this time and he's like oh i don't know top right i guess <laughs> like okay and then so like we make a plan around it because he would just like literally not come sometimes but he would still um he would still like take over games and blaze and i had like a very a uh, non-communicative synergy together. We would like not really talk to each other or like make plays like verbally, but we would always be doing the same thing, um, which I think is part of what made us like so good. Cause there wasn't like, there was never like a missed calm or like a misunderstanding, a verbal misunderstanding between us. It was just sort of like, we always kind of did the same thing and knew what we were doing. Um, he was like never like I'm jumping in, Matt, come in or whatever. Like he was like we would just do it, you know. Um, which I think is very different to like TFT these days, where like everybody's like all about communication. Like you like need to communicate with your teammate. Like blank scout communicates with like Romer. Like I'm going in now. Like blah, 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 like like we never did that on on Freya with Blaze. He was just sort of like just knew what to do, and then I sort of just like knew what to do. So we were just really dominant. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I love Tyler. I wish he would uh, play again. Maybe that would uh, entice me to, to play again. But I think Blaze is like in a, in, a, in a fair spot. I would have him at number four. And I would probably swap the next person with Habib, if I'm being honest. Or even myself. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, oh, also, I, I've known Blaze for as long as I've known TLR, basically. I played with Blaze. I played b-ball with Blaze when I was, like, 15 years old. So. Uh, platinum number three. Here, time again. It's time again to annoy you guys. There is no fucking way that this guy is number three. 
You guys are out of your fucking minds. You're literally out of your fucking minds that he is number three. I saw people putting Platt at number two and it fucking blew my mind. And the craziest thing is, like, I was like thinking to myself, like, number two, what the fuck? And then everybody who's like, on the forums of like plat number two, plat number two. I like check their fucking profile and their account is made after plat quit years after plat quit playing the fucking game. Like what the fuck do you know? Do you even watch the fucking game when he played? Okay, plat was really good, but mix up was notoriously an incredibly good team from like building block number one to six. They were like the most like skill tight team in the entire game i don't hate mix up mix up was really fucking good like really fucking good but the seasons i lost to mix up let me tell you guys who i lost i46 to okay i hate plot because he's from florida i actually don't mind plot Platt and I got along quite well because he thought I was really good, so he didn't shit talk me. Which in my book was a plus. At I-46, I lost to Platinum, TLR, Hard Blue, Ruin, Enigma, and Pure on Medic. Do you know who I had on my team? I had Tyrone and Mackie and Sizer. And Sizer was a very good player, but mechanically was not as good as Enigma and Ruin. That's who I lost. I, that's, those are the teams that like people look back and they're like, Platt? Platt's like the Banny of Mixup. That guy would just like trade seasons with the only one to challenge Banny ever. It's like, dude. Of course. That he had like the Mixup had the best teams. And then in season 15 when they beat like that HRG Banny team, I think that team was even better. I'm cuz sure, that team had Siegel on it. I don't remember who they traded out for. No Ruin, right? Or was Ruin on that team? Oh, no Squid, right? Squid, they had Squid and Siegel. Enigma. I don't know. That team was also just incredibly fucking good. Seagull, TLR, Platt, Squid, Enigma, Harblue. Harblue, like, incredibly good medic, by the way. That team was also unbelievably, like, skill tight. Like, the disparity between, like, Platinum. Like, could you even say Platinum was the best player on that team? Are you guys fucking crazy? Like, everybody loves Seagull, right? Was Platinum that much better than Seagull? It's crazy. Like, Platinum was very good and always one of the better players on his team. But in a team of, like, some of the best players assembled that have ever played the game, Platinum was barely better, if at all, than the rest of his team. They were just incredibly good across the board. And putting, like, Enigma at, like, what is he, 15? And Platinum at number three is like, oh, I guess Platinum just carried Mix-Up. That's, like, so disingenuous and not true. Like, Platinum had some of the best players ever play the game on his team. Like, the, the key difference between Platinum and Banny, especially back then, um, is that Banny was literally carrying noobs. Like, Banny is on a team with Tyrone and Mackie, man. Like, are you guys out of your mind? He won... Banny won season seven with Giggly on his team. Wait, who did someone read? I can't see. I don't know. If someone read it, thank you. I, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, unbelievable that you guys can like put Platinum at the same level as Banny simply because he beat Banny sometimes. Like, it was way more common for players in general to beat Banny back then. And by the way, Enigma was one of those people that beat Banny every time as well. So every single time Platinum beat Banny, Enigma was there also beating Banny. 
So like, dude, <laughs> massive overrate. Already I would put Platinum at number five, Habib at number three, and Blaze at number four. Acting like I don't know who number two is. But like from this list or whatever, like three through five, I would have Platinum at the lowest one out of the, out of the three by far. By far. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, Platt, incredibly good player, but super overblown. And so strangely, like his skill is so strangely overrated because like most of the people who like argue for Platt being number two didn't even play the game. They didn't even play. They don't even know what the fuck's going on. Like, I played against this guy and against all of his teams that he made, and he was very good, but so was the rest of his team. Notoriously incredible. So, I don't know. Also, he was on a team called the Virgin Police. Come on, dude. Number five, easy. Number two, Clockwork. So, I think I'm overrated here. To be honest, I'll just start with that. Um, it's hard to rank myself, but I thought I was going to be like, maybe, I, was, I thought I was definitely going to be behind Habib and maybe behind Blaze. And I thought I was also going to be behind Platt, but I think that's bullshit. Um, I would agree with myself as like a top five player and like a top one scout, I guess. But like, obviously the list doesn't really rank in that way. Um, but I've had, I had like a pretty successful career. Even before I was on Froyo Tech, like I basically did the YZ50 and came in season nine, which was my second ever invite season and I won LAN. So it was like my first LAN I ever went to and we won from like the fourth or third seed or something in season nine. Um, and then we lost season 10, which again, okay, I had CB, Tyrone, and Mackie. CB was actually maybe the worst medic I've ever played with in my entire like life playing the game. Um, CB was like horrendous. And I, I lost against like a pretty stacked mix-up team, I would say. Um, and then I won season 11. I had like a really long period of time where like I just wasn't successful in invite because I just didn't play with those people, which honestly should affect, like which is why I would put like someone like Habib ahead of me. Because not that I think if Habib left Banny's team that he would be winning against Banny necessarily. Like he might be getting like second or third like I was getting. But he, the point is he stayed with Manny the whole time. So there's no hypothetical here. Like he has just been dominating ever since. You know what I mean? Um, so for me, like I left that team in like season 11 or season 12 to play with like the bro people. Um, and we had like a, a couple like just meme -me seasons. Like I was just like in college, like, and that's just like what I did in my free time. I just like played TF2 and like won third place prize money. <laughs> free SEA where like I would just go to LAN and like, make stupid fucking jerseys for myself um but yeah i didn't i didn't play like my last successful season before Freya Tech was season 12 or like second place at i-46 so um and then you know my my Freya Tech career speaks for itself but i think i'm a little overrated here i would maybe put myself really high just based on talent alone and like skill and, and potential um skill and whatever but i feel like i'm a little bit overrated here um obviously i thought this was really funny you guys like suck so bad dude look at these frag records how have you guys not beaten me i'm first second third and fifth come on for real you can't get one other person to take third or second. It's going to be hard to take this one because this was like, people were like bad at Viduck. So I was just like running around killing everything. This is like almost impossible to beat with the way that like invite matches are played now. But like, come on. Third, like at least like, I don't know. 
But I definitely think I was like the most dominant scout and scout diffed like the most uh, in my career. Oh my God, spoiler. Um, but I would say that like, I'm a little bit overrated because in the grand scheme of things, I didn't play for that long with Rayo Tech and win for that long with Rayo Tech compared to like people like Blaze um, and Habib who just like, just kept fucking winning like 18 championships, 14 championships. Like I have seven. You know, and that doesn't count like the SIVO and like the international tournaments and stuff. Like I've won like easily like ten real championships, but I've only won like, you know, seven real ESCA championships. So hundred people left after the spoiler. Um so spoiler. Vanny number one, what else is there really to say? Thirty two seasons played, made playoffs every single time he played, twenty five championships. Um this is probably one of his most impressive wins. Um, this one, I think season nine as well, honestly, with me, was one of his more impressive wins. Um, and then the Freyo Tech wins are, you know, impressive, but hold less weight because we were already, like, such an established team of, like, dominance. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fucking Banny. You can't really, like, argue against it. Like, there's no universe in which Banny is not number one. Um... I wish it were different. <laughs> Season 24, you definitely did not go 19-0. and 0. Oh my god. Falsified records. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's fucking Banny. So... I think that that's pretty understandable. Not really much to say. Banny has been the most dominant player in TF2 since the very beginning. Was much better than Platt. Wasn't like the, the platinum of like his team or whatever. He was like the best demo in the game, like a hard carry. Carried people like way worse than him. And then just like snowballed his success into like easily the most decorated career um in tf2 hopefully that changes soon and like people start really stepping up and challenging him more and more but something tells me a team with like banny and jay and, and marmalu are the heavy favorites to win um next season so and habib so yeah 